What's up everybody? I'm Evil Rabbit. We're here on a set of Corsa taking a look at some drifting tutorials that I want to start here on this episode from beginning to end, basics to advanced, starting out, how to pick a car, your wheel settings, how to get started, how to learn car control, things like that nature. People have been asking me a lot, you know, for tutorials and stuff on drifting. So we're here today to start a new series and give you guys some tips and I'll kind of explain what I'm doing and try and help you guys out to get you sideways in a set of Corsa or any other game because it pretty much the, the stuff that I'm going to show you will also apply to Forza, Forza Horizon 4 and stuff like that, the basics and everything like that. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I'll have you in the description box below. Let's get to it, let's get started. The first major thing that you need to worry about is actually wheel settings. So for here in a set of Corsa, for my wheel settings, we're going to go to a set of Corsa and controls. So obviously we have all my controls and stuff like that. So when it comes to systems and force feedback, force feedback is actually the biggest thing. So we're going to actually turn this off real quick. As you can see, my gain is at 60. I turned it down because my Fanatec has a little bit more power and I wanted to turn it down a little bit. So that is a personal preference. Um, you may want a little bit higher on like a G920 to make it snap back faster and stuff like that. I will be doing some of these tutorials on a G920 as well. And if you've noticed, I've pretty much turned everything off. I've turned all my curb effects, road effects, slip feel, all, everything is off. Because my the Fanatec does a very good job of doing that and the game itself does a very good job of doing that as well. So I turned it all off. It's helped me out tremendously and makes the wheel feel very good. So that's my first tip is getting wheel settings dialed in. Now, these may not work for you. You may have to tweak them a little bit. I have tried these on a G920 and it does work. I have had to kick my gain up to about 100% for a G920. So for you G920 users or G29 users, 100% would be a good, probably a good option. So we're going to get the drift scene back up. Now, when it comes to picking a car, when you first start off drifting, you're going to want something around a lower horsepower when you're first starting out. I see a lot of people making the big mistake of going straight to a thousand horsepower cars thinking, I'm going to be able to drift this. And then they get frustrated. They don't want to drift anymore because the car's really snappy. Like they hop into a VDC car and they're like, I'm going to do this. The VDCs are very snappy. Um, they can be tuned out, they can be fixed but they're very snappy because of the grippy level tires that they run and everything like that. So my suggestion is actually the world of drift street cars. These cars are extremely good to drive. They're really nice. You have some 180s, you have some Laurels, S13s, S14s, 15s, you know, R32s, Corollas, you know, JZXs, you know, all kinds. So today we're going to actually be using the S14, probably one of my favorite cars. It's about 330 three horsepower which is a very good starting power I would recommend definitely starting at a lower power and working your way up so we're gonna get to the track and we're gonna talk a little bit about the settings of the car but we're not gonna get too much into tuning a drift car yet because we'll get more into that in a later episode because these world drift cars are pretty well tuned from the beginning so if you're first learning out I would recommend these cars so let's get to the track my favorite track to practice on right now is actually called airport drift track so i will actually leave it down in the description box below it's really nice because it's got some nice sweepy turns it's got some long turns but it's got a, a bunch of turns that you can drive up to and start drifting and learn how to drift a full turn rather than trying to do a whole track right away because you gotta pretty much go one turn at a time learn it go to the next one and it just progress and you know progressively get better and better at every turn but they also have a nice skid pad area with some cones because we're gonna you know first if you're first starting out you're gonna want to start doing donuts you're gonna want to learn basic car control which we're gonna get into a little bit today so I will leave the link for the track and the cars down in the description box below so let's actually get into the car and actually go sideways and enough talking and let's get sideways and you know actually do something so for today's aspect, we're not going to be using the handbrake because 
a lot of people don't have a handbrake. So we're not going to be using the handbrake because you don't need it when you're first starting out. If you're first learning to drift, it's all going to be about that clutch kick, a little bit of a, you know left foot braking and throttle control and your wheel control. So when it comes to setting, the World Drift Streetcar is set pretty well. 30, t 30 PSI in the front, 27 in the rear. 80% boost, we can kick it up to 100, which we probably will do. Camber and everything is pretty, from out of the box, pretty good. I wouldn't recommend changing it if you're first starting off. Like I said, we're going to get into full tuning in a later episode. So, the, on, the, on the car, in the car, however you want to do it, we're going to be showing this in third person so that you guys can kind of see what the car is doing. We do have the wheel cam and everything out. So, kick this up to 100% boost. And when I said you gotta learn basic car control, a lot of people will, you know, be like, oh, I got this, and go straight out here and just be like, let me just, you know, go sideways and then, you know, this happens. Or they'll, you know, get going and they'll be like, okay, I got this. I got a handbrake, I should be able to do this. No, oh, no, no, I don't. So, not having basic car control or the concept of the control of being able to catch the drift and knowing how much to counter steer and throttle control because throttle control is definitely a very big thing you don't want to be like just planted the throttle the entire time because it's not gonna it's not gonna work so the easiest thing to start doing for anybody to learn to drift and learn basic car control is find a place like this that has like cones which airport drift is perfect for this and basically you're gonna want to cruise up and you're gonna want to do a little bit of clutch kick to get the car sideways and you're gonna turn in and then you're gonna realize what it does. A little clutch kick, let the wheel and see and start countering and pretty much learn how much throttle to give it to do donuts. It's it's not a hard thing to start learning. And if you let off the gas, the donuts get larger, get on the gas, they get smaller, but you're also learning wheel control because the biggest thing is you can't just go straight to lock and think you're going to be able to drift that's not going to work so you have to learn the fine you know fine adjustments of you know drifting when it comes to your wheel and things of that nature so we're going to get into another donut here a little clutch kick a little left foot brake slide the wheel and it's all about now if you notice i'm not really turning much with my hands I'm kind of using throttle to make the car go where I want. I'm feathering the gas, more gas makes it go more angle, less gas will let it shallow up. More gas, more angle, less gas, less angle. So if you can get yourself into a kind of a drift circle like this where you don't have to do much hand movement and just use throttle, you can almost get to the point where you can let go of the steering wheel and just use throttle to be doing your turns. Now these might be a little bit tight to be able to do that. So we're going to actually try to get into one and see if I can actually do that. Might have to go in second gear. So if you noticed when I was doing that I wasn't really changing my steering position. Kind of just using throttle to control it. Now when it comes to like transitioning, that's a whole nother thing. You do want to get off the gas when you transition. But if you're first starting out and learning, learn basic car control. Learn how to do a donut and then progress the donut into say a figure eight. So we're gonna pop this in first, cruise up, a little clutch kick, get into a circle. There we go. And if you notice not much hand movement, kind of just using throttle to control my angle of attack on this cone and then if we want to transition we'll come back get off the gas let it flick and see how it started to rotate the right way so the next thing in that aspect would be to give it a little more give it a clutch kick to kick it back the other way and then you're going this way and then go this way a little clutch kick to kick it back back on throttle basically back into a, a small donut and I know a lot of people are saying, well, donuts are stupid, you know, it's not a big... But this is where everybody starts. When I first learned how to drift real cars, I started doing drift donuts. I started doing donuts around cones and things of this nature. And, you know, you can get much closer. And if you notice, these little left foot brakes. So you can actually clutch kick it, left foot brake it, slow yourself down, and go back around. Or if you want to just use left foot brake to control the car... 
and stay in angle, you can use a left foot brake to keep the car in angle but also still be sliding. So I know doing do donuts is boring, but it gives you the aspect of control. So then you can come in at a much faster speed, clutch kick it, and realize where you need to grab it in order to keep the drift. Coming in wider, clutch kicking it in, the left foot brake, going around the cone, there you go. See, then you're in that and you can flick it back the other way. So learning basic car control is the biggest tip I can say here for a new beginner. Learn basic car control, learn how to do a simple donut and then progress to doing a much larger donut. We're gonna go in third. Much larger donut using the left foot brake but staying on power little clutch kicks to keep angle and you'll be able to after you do that and learn that basic of knowing how the car is going to react when you do it and how much you need to counter steer versus how much throttle you'll be able to do full turns and long sweepy turns and stuff like that but you need the progression of knowing how much to give throttle how little to give throttle and that things before you even go and tackle a full track so with just knowing that little bit I can come up here I can kind of just clutch kick the car pretend it's a big circle but then feather off every drift is kind of based on a small drift circle or a bigger drift circle it's just half of a drift circle hairpins are very small circles so it's knowing how to do a drift circle will help you understand so coming into say a turn like this this is just a big circle if you clutch kick it and you just feather in the gas if I were to continue this I would do this but if you notice it's just a big circle but it's only half a circle that you're actually drifting so if you get to the point where you understand that you can go alright well I'm gonna come up to here it's gonna be like a small drift it's gonna be a medium sized drift circle I'm gonna come up, clutch kick, go. Okay, but I, but the circle's ending, so I'm gonna let off the gas. Car straightens up. You just drifted your, a, a full turn. So it's it's kind of learning basic car control first. I would recommend definitely recommend doing donuts and stuff first before doing full on tracks. Learning basic car control will help. These World of Drift Street cars are definitely a very useful car to use because they're a lower power car. So if anything, don't start off trying to go drift a VDC car right away. Don't try and, you know, throw yourself in 1,000 horsepower, you know, VDC or a 900 horsepower DC GP car. You know, work on some street cars first because street cars are a lot of fun. Sometimes you can have a lot more fun in some lower power tandem cars than you will high end cars and stuff like that. So when it comes to clutch kicking, initiations, high things like that, those will come in next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little first episode of tutorials. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, okay, this is this is boring. Oh, grinding gears. Maybe we should learn to shift first. But this is how everybody starts. It's how I started learning how to drift. I started doing drift circles. You know, everybody gets frustrated when they first start drifting on a wheel in a game because they're like, I can't do it. But you're trying to do so much at once you're just trying to go into a track and be able to drift a whole course when it's it's not really going to happen that way not right away so start little get big that's the biggest thing i can say so for first episode here on tutorials on drifting we basically to run it over wheel settings selecting a car that's not overpowered for your skill level and starting off with learning car control with doing donuts figure eights and then once you get that then you'll understand that you know what it's not as hard as it may seem even though i'm going off the grass but you know i'm trying to explain it while i'm doing it so make sure you guys follow me on instagram and twitter all of you found in the description box below and as always i thank you guys for watching i'm evil rabbit see you guys on the track